what's up guys welcome back to the video and in today's video i'm going to be talking about some really scientific facts some really steep science kinesiology and some biomechanics about our body fat now what is body fat how our body burns fat how the body how our body enters the fat zone how the body can burn fat effectively through workouts through diet and we're going to be covering all these step by step so stay tuned to the video watch the video till the end do forget to like comment share subscribe and stay tuned till the end all right so we're going to be talking about what is body fat what is its role and how does it protect the body against several i would say uh, uh, how the, what what is its actual role okay so body fat helps regulate firstly it helps regulate the body's temperature and a certain amount of body fat is very essential for an individual around let's say 10 to 12 percent of body fat that like, it's very important a body fat can be measured by calipers or maybe you can go through several websites known as body mass indexes there are several websites available on google so you can definitely go check check them out right so body fat helps regulate the temperature firstly number one number two it is also it is also provided a certain amount of strength okay so in strength training and uh, protection of several diseases then it helps also regulate the body temperature right so a certain amount of body fat is essential but if that body fat exceeds let's say 16 percent let's say 17 percent 18 percent so it could be detrimental it could it could be hazardous to the human's health right it could be hazardous to the individual's health so in women specifically around 16 to maybe 15 percent of body fat is sufficient enough uh, whereas in men they should probably stay around 13 or maybe 14 percent of body fat 12 is very relatively good it determines that the person is very much athletic is perfect and he concentrates primarily on on his nutrition on his workout regimen and uh, diet protocols and stuff like that so if the body fat percentage exceeds let's say about 16 percent about 17 or 19 percent then it could be uh, fatal for the person's health and he may he may be more prone to diseases like a heart attack like diabetes like cancer and uh, he may get more he may go he may get more exasperated there may be more mood swings and he may feel a lot of fatigue tiredness uh sitting position might be very uncomfortable for long times and these are the these are the primarily the symptoms of being an overweight so overweight is very uncomfortable especially when you are when you experience body shaming from public and it could be it could be really exasperating it could be the person could really get infuriating and it's really frustrating to be in the situation firstly i myself have been in the situation and i totally understand it. being in that situation and getting rid out of it it takes a lot and a lot of efforts guys not just from a nutrition not just from the workout perspective but even from the nutrition perspective you have to clean out every diet you have to just extricate everything from your diet you have to be more disciplined more rigid when it comes to your workout routine when it comes to your diet to get rid of that uh, stubborn belly fat or you say love handles which is located on the side of the west and a lot of other things uh, especially overweight and obese people tend to undergo in their in their life so anything above or anything that exceeds the limit is always potentially hazardous so body fat as we can see if we try to pinch our skin now my skin is not that thick enough that means my fat could be relatively around standing or 15 to 16 percent which is okay but if i try to drop that uh, my drop the fat down it could be potential it could be very good for my potential health and i might look more uh, vascular i might look more athletic i might look more huge right when it comes to uh, when it's come to tracking my progress and fitness so anything above x anything as we have said i would like to reiterate anything above a potential level is potentially hazardous right so how does a body store fat how the body stores fat where is it stored and how does the body fat gets burned apparently 
so body fat is stored by consuming calories so whatever we consume calories is ultimately assimilated it is first of all absorbed and then later on it is excreted by the small intestine and small intestine absorbs all the nutrients and then later on it is excreted whatever the unnecessary waste by the uh, rectum so if we try to over consume calories than what is required by our body right if we try to consume more calories than what is required by our body the body will say okay i don't require this food now so where should i store this okay let me store it as an uh, as an excess energy so that excess energy will get transmitted to a triglycerides what we call it as fatty cells right so you might have come, come across in your reports if you have uh, gone through all the body checkups or maybe metabolism chest and you see primarily my triglycerides are up so in order to reduce your triglycerides you have to be in a calorie deficit right so major of the doctors recommend you that uh, you have to cut down this if you cut down that if you cut down this so and a lot of a uh, lot of changes are required in your lifestyle you have to change your lifestyle con con uh, consistently your sedentary lifestyle is pretty much lethargic you are pretty much lazy and you have to change your lifestyle your nutrition your uh, you you have to do you have to burn more calories right so you see triglycerides are pretty much high and that is because of fatty cells accumulated more because you're consuming more calories the body doesn't know what to do so the body is keeping that excess fatty cells or excess calories as fat cells so it it gets stored as triglycerides so this process happens and happens and over and over again this happens repetitively repetitively over and over years again consistently it happens year after year you see you see you are gaining a lot of fat especially on your belly especially on your love handles your cheeks your arms are getting more more uh, i would say thick not thin your arms are getting more thin and you start not seeing a lot of noticeable changes in your appearances is that as big that's and you see that you are having fatigue very quite frequently while even when walking maybe just walking few steps you're having quite fatigue very easily tiredness and these are the results of being an overweight so it's quite fr it's quite frustrating so after after the body the body fat accumulates the we have to burn it we have to burn it right so this this was the process how the body fat gets stored right it gets excess body fat even affects the liver excess body fat even affects the heart so if excess body fat tries try to get stored inside the body the system cannot function efficiently and as a result we are more the person or individual is more prone to diseases right so the next stage is how do we burn fat how the body enters the fat zone and what what strategies and tips to be followed in workouts or in in my lifestyle and my nutrition right so as we understand when we consume excess calories the body doesn't know where to store and it's stored as excess calories and that is stored as triglycerides and fat now the now this person now this person is getting fat 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 his weight is increasing on the weighing scale and he doesn't have any sufficient amount of muscle mass on his body his chest is weak his chest is absolutely not defined arms are pretty much skinny it's pretty much slimy um legs are pretty much weak okay they're okay they're fine they're holding some amount of muscle mass so how can we efficiently burn fat number one comes nutrition nutrition is 70 percent guys and workout is 30 percent so in order to burn fat let's say you are consuming 30 percent or maybe 30 30 60 30 30 60 right that means carbohydrate 30 percent protein 30 percent and fat 30 percent so that fat could be healthy fat or maybe or maybe uh, low healthy low fats right 
in order to burn fat you got to be decreasing your carbohydrate intake or maybe you can solely you can solely shift your preferential preference to uh, brown carbohydrates or maybe say complex carbohydrates avoiding simple carbohydrates protein intake should be upscaled increasing your protein intake healthy fats you can keep it as stable as that so in order to burn fat you got to be decreasing your carb your simple carbohydrates by simple carbohydrates i mean pasta sugar cakes donuts uh biscuits then we say fast food then we say dough uh, white bread white white pasta uh, white macaroni uh what do you say all the sweets we say anything which contains a lot of calories so what happens this when we try to consume these calories the insulin level is spiked up by the pancreas so the insulin level gets spiked up and this hampers the metabolism ultimately and due to loads and loads of energy is exploded into a system the body doesn't know what to do with that energy so that gets stored as fat it it doesn't get assimilated doesn't get absorbed by the body at all whereas if we try to switch it to complex carbohydrates let's say oatmeal let's say uh, the indian chapatis let's say brown rice or maybe say veggies right so if we try to consume these foods the insulin level is spiked there is a spike in insulin level but it is more efficiently absorbed by the body the assimilation absorption of the body of these foods is more syn is in a synthesized manner as compared to having simple carbs or sugary foods what we call it as starchy carbohydrates so starchy carbohydrates it is always advisable to stay away from them and i would highly recommend to shift your your diet to complex carbohydrates now that that now that doesn't mean that you should ha keep having complex carbohydrates obviously if you try to exceed if you try to if you're not staying in a caloric deficit if you're not staying if you're not counting your calories not counting your macros not staying in a caloric deficit ultimately that isn't going to do any benefit to you right so you have to be in a calorie deficit make sure you track your calories make sure you track your macros drop you can drop your calories but every 100 under every every week you can drop 100 calories so 100 100 100 and what this happens is you are dropping your carbohydrate intake so whatever energy the excess energy is stored in the triglycerides that that energy the body will be utilized for fat for efficient processing of the system right so whatever excess energy the body doesn't have excess energy to produce whatever it's got so it will be retrieving that energy and that that's how the body will be functioning ultimately that's how the synthesis and stimulating of the energy is produced and thereby your body enters into a fat zone and week by week progress of uh, month by month you start seeing a dramatic changes in your appearances you see the body is in a fat mode it's on a fat zone and the glucose level earlier it was spilling over so glucose level was spilling over now now that you have decreased your carbohydrate intake the glucose level is low now the glucose level how do we decrease the glucose level yeah so now comes the workout the workouts that's how we decrease our glucose level efficiently to maximize our efficiency of the progress right so the workout should be it, you can opt for several splits like push pull leg split like you can go for upper body split lower body split you can go for a two body bar split or maybe three body bar split but i personally prefer to go for a three body bar split where then you train three body parts in a single day let's say shoulders chest or forearms or maybe back and legs which are two big muscle groups so make sure you train for an hour at least make sure your workouts are really intense the cut down the short Uh, rest periods. Make sure the in ha uh, the intensity of a workout is very 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 high and it's very intense. Okay. Stage three, coming to cardio. Cardio, I would highly recommend you guys to do neat 
What does NEAT stand for? NEAT stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. Now, Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis, it basically means walking 10,000 steps a day. Now, 10,000 steps. Maybe you could just go, maybe just walking here and there, maybe taking the stairs instead of the elevators, uh, taking the stairs instead of the elevators, walking 10,000 steps, steps, steps like that. So, in order to burn more calories, apart besides your workout, you have to make sure you are, you are not being lazy, you're not being lethargic, and you're at least doing 10,000 steps a day. So that is called as non-exercise activity thermogenesis. This is a very efficient way to burn, ma ma maximize your progress in a very stabilized manner. So that is cardio or maybe if you do if you don't like to do neat you can also opt for a HIT like short burst exercises like burpees like uh, thug jumps or maybe jump um, jumping uh, I would say uh, jumping jacks then um, squats jump squats star jumps skipping rope swimming lot of exercises available guys so you can opt for this, that as well right so your diet is clean your your strength training is good your need is very good so if you combine all this give 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 it us ample amount of time guys give it a sufficient amount of time let's say minimum of time of like six 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 weeks and within six weeks keep tracking your pictures keep keep monitoring your progress keep controlling it keep counting your macros your calories your workouts your need Make sure you sleep appropriately well. Make sure you rejuvenate the next day very well so that you can work out effectively, you can concentrate and your focus is very good for the workouts the next day. And that's how you burn all those deep store fat, which is called as stubborn belly fat, also called as subcutaneous fat in, uh, med in medical science or fitness science. So subcutaneous fat is a very hard fat it usually tends to go last so all we can do is if you're not uh, if you're not able to see your progress if you're not able to see noticeable amount of changes what should we do for that you should focus more on your diet drop your calories furthermore by 100 by 200 calories more and maybe start you remember you might start seeing results right so the stubborn belly fat is the last one to to go and it is the first one to come so stay consistent guys stay persistent and i will see you in the next video till then peace out